Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Switch again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Friday, November 21st, 2014, around 8.31 p.m. in Berwick, Massachusetts. A cold night tonight, hot lows in the 20s. Tomorrow's going to be another cold day, highs close to 40. Some news to report. The West Virginia basketball team beat the... BC men's basketball team at the Puerto Rico tip-off classic by the score of 70-66 tonight. And that's about it on the news. And my third and final video blog subject of the night is my personality profile. And my personality profile tonight is about the late, great WWE Hall of Famer, Yokozuna. Yokozuna was one of the biggest big men in professional wrestling history. He weighed well over 600 pounds in his prime. He was a two-time WWE World Champion and one-time WWE Tag Team Champion with the late great Owen Hart the Rocket. And Yokozuna was born, his real name was Rodney Hanoi, and he was born in San Francisco, California. And he was related to many of the Anoes, like Arthur and Sika, those were his uncles, and his cousins were the Usos, Roman Reigns, Rakishi, Samu, the Tonga Kid, and The Rock, among others. And he was trained to become a professional wrestler by Arthur and Seiko, the Wild Samoans. And he started his wrestling career at 1984 in Japan under the name the Great Kokina. And then he also wrestled in Mexico under the name of the Wild Samoa Kokina and he also wrestled in UWF in a few regional territories and he and his first break in professional wrestling in America was in the AWA he wrestled in the AWA in the winding days of their promotion around 1989-1990 he wrestled under the name Kokina Maximus and he was managed in the AEWA by Sheik Adnel Al Casey and his one of the major storylines he was involved in is he he injured and broke the leg of Greg Gagne and he was credited with ending Greg Gagne's career the AWA folded and then he, he wrestled like I know he wrestled around in Independence and in Mexico and in the fall of 92 Rodney Anoe went to the WWE and he got a name change. He got a name changed as Yokozuna. And he dressed up like a real life Yokozuna and stuff like that. And he he wore that the, the belt they wear, wear the Yokozunas. And he had like big, big tights. And he was managed by Mr. Fuji, the devious one. And Yokozuna made the debut in the fall of 1992 and he was a very big man. He was built from the Posi Polynesian Islands and representing Japan. He wasn't Japan Japanese at all. He wasn't a U.S. citizen but the, the storyline says he was representing Japan and he was very agile for a man who was well over 500 pounds. He did a couple of belly to belly suplexes. He had good speed for a, a big man and his famous quote Famous um, finishing maneuver was the bonsai drop while he laid out his opponent and he brought the opponent to the, near the ropes and he, Yokozuna would go up to the second rope and drop down and he'd say, bonsai! Beats the opponent, one, two, three. And when Yokozuna made his debut on WWE television, he was unstoppable as a monster. He beat, beat several jobbers and stuff. His first major win at a at a WWE pay-per-view was in the Survivor Series 1992 when he beat Virgil easily. And then Yokozuna continued to beat preliminary wrestler, preliminary wrestler, preliminary wrestlers like crazy. And then he entered the 1993 Royal Rumble, which was the first Royal Rumble, where the winner of that Royal Rumble got the shot at the WWE Championship. And Yokozuna came in and he came, he drew a late number and he beat everybody in, who was in the Royal Rumble and he beat them and he won the Royal Rumble. He actually f flew Macho Man Randy Savage 
up when the, the Macho Man gave him the his finishing move, move the flying elbow off of the top rope. Macho Man pinned him one, two, three, but there's no pins in the Royal Rumble, and Yokozuna flew him up over the top rope from a sitting position, and Yokozuna was the winner of the 1993 Royal Rumble, and he got, and he was was got the shot as the number one contender for the WWE Championship belt against Bret the Hitman Hart at WrestleMania 9 in Las Vegas, Nevada. And a couple of weeks later, Yokozuna like had it like a challenge from Hacksaw Jim Duggan because at that time Yokozuna was not knocked off his feet on television except on the pay per view and on WWE Superstars and then it took four times for Hacksaw Jim Duggan to knock down Yokozuna and he knocked down Yokozuna and he was cheering he waved the American flag but um, Yokozuna had that the salt pan that Mr. Fuji gave it to him and he attacked Hacksaw Jim Duggan knocked him out conscious and he delivered not one but not two not three but four buns I dropped to Hacksaw Jim Duggan knocking him out cold and stuff and he had internal bleed and he had to be carried off on a stretch and stuff like that this was just pushing Yokozuna as a monster they continue to push Yokozuna as a monster beating a preliminary master preliminary wrestler before Wrestlemania 9 and then they had a contract signing with him and Bret the Hitman Hart on Wrestling Challenge for the WWE Tag Ma title match at WrestleMania 9 and it was signed and then afterwards like Yokozuna attacks Bret the Hitman Hart and delivers the bonsai drop and then Bret slowly gets up and stuff but this was <laughs> pushing Yokozuna as a monster heel and at WrestleMania 9, Yokozuna faced off against Bret the Hintman Hat for the WWE title and was a great match. It was so so much agility what Bret could do with a, over a 500 pound man. I think that was one of the best matches I've seen ever for like a super heavyweight Yokozuna kind of dominated the match with Bret the Hintman Hat, but Bret the Hintman Hat fought back fought back and he put him in the sharpshooter but mr fuji got the salt and put the salt in the eyes of Bret the hitman hat and yokozuna rolls him up for the one two three and there's a new wwe champion but hold on hulk hogan comes in the ring and protests saying mr fuji threw the salt mr fuji threw the salt and then mr F fuji challenges um, Hulk Hogan to a championship match in prompt two and then Brett says go for it go for it go for it go for it and then he goes for it and then they fight but Mr. Fuji's gonna throw the salt but he throw, but Hogan ducks and throws it in Yokozuno's face and Hogan beats Mr. punches Mr. Fuji and he gives Yokozuna the leg drop one two three Hogan's the champion for the fifth time, and Yokozuna's title reign was very brief in the WWE at that point, but they had a rematch a couple of months later at the first King of the Ring pay-per-view, Hulk Hogan against Yokozuna, and Yokozuna, like, Hogan couldn't slam Yokozuna, and Hogan was kind of beating him up until like, uh, there was a photographer, and the photographer sp splat flew, was something exploded and there was a fireball it went into Hogan's eyes and then Yokozuna gives him the leg drop one two three Yokozuna's a champion for the second time and then they put they he puts Hogan near the bottom the ropes and then when Yokozuna goes up to the second rope and gives the bonsai drop to Hogan and Hogan's out and the announcer says Hulkamania's dead that was the last match Hogan wrestled on television in WWE for nine years they had a few house show matches in Europe between Yokozuna and Hulk Hogan Hogan won by disqualification but titles don't change hands in, in disqualification so Yokozuna became stood a champion and then and the house shows Yokozuna was wrestling but the hitman had Full flew out the summer of 1993 in steel cage matches Yokozuna won them but there was a new challenge that Yokozuna faced body challenge at 
the deck of the U.S. intrepid um, July 4th, 1993 to see who could body Sam Lammy Okazuna. There were several WWE superstars and NFL players and even NBA players. They couldn't slam Yokozuna, but one person did. It was the Lex Luger. Lex Luger body slams Yokozuna. And then there's that, the feud for SummerSlam 93, Yokozuna against Lex Luger for the WWE title, and then Yokozuna scared, so he gets Jim Cornette as an American spokesperson. They sign a contract, but in the fine print, the contract says that Luger didn't beat Yokozuna for the title. That was his one and only title shot. They had the match at SummerSlam 93. Yok uh, Yokozuna loses to Lex Luger by countout. Yo and the title can't change hands and crowd out. And Lugo is denied a chance for the WWE title. But like Yokozuna continues on as WWE champion. And he had a great run over nine months. He fielded with The Undertaker over the WWE title in the fall and winter of 1993 through 1994. It was a great feud. It culminated in a casket match at the Royal Rumble 1994 where like the Undertaker was dominating Yokozuna and he put Yokozuna in the casket but several wrestlers attacked the Undertaker Undertaker but he was fighting back fighting back fighting back until Yokozuna gets up out of the casket and then attacks the Undertaker and then attacks Paul Bella and and comes off and stuff like that and you know, they all the Yokozuna and his 10 henchmen food he undertake and the casket and the Yokozuna retains the WWE title and then this can, and then afterwards Yokozuna goes to WrestleMania 10 as the WWE champion and he defends the title twice at the at WrestleMania 10 first against Lex Luger, which Luger beats, slams Yokozuna again and dominates the match and stuff like that. But the special referee was Mr. Perfect, and Mr. Perfect was kind of subletting a heel turn. And then Luger gets disqualified just for touching Mr. Perfect. And then Yokozuna, Yokozuna retains the title, but he faces off against Britt the Hitman Hart. For the main event at WrestleMania 10, the second match, Yokozuna dominates that match, and he was going up for the bonsai drop for Bret the Hitman hat, but he slipped on the bottom rope, second rope, and then Bret moves out of the way and pins him one, two, three. Yokozuna's nine month title reign's over, and then, then Yokozuna kind of goes down the cards a little bit from a main event wrestler to a tag team wrestler with Crush. And they team up for a few months, and they have a good push as a tag team. They beat the Smoking Guns and other teams, and then they had a tag team title match at Wrestle at at the King of the Ring 1994 against the the, the Head Shrinkers, Fatu and Samu, and then that was a great match. But like Lex Luger interfered because he was feuding with Crush at that time, and the Head Shrinkers retained the titles. And this is when, like, Yokozuna's weight was becoming an issue. He was billed from 505 pounds to 568 pounds, but this was reports he was well over 600 pounds and stuff. He was becoming a little bit immobile in the rain and stuff. He was relegated to tag team matches and stuff. He was off the SummerSlam 1994 card with a back injury and stuff. Then he resumed his feud with The Undertaker and... They feuded throughout the fall and house shows and stuff. It culminated with a f match at Survivor Series, another casket match, which The Undertaker got his revenge and beat Yokozuna, threw him in the casket, and Yokozuna was off TV for several months, and his weight was continuing to become more of an issue, and they put him in a tag team. He made a surprise return to the WWE in... WrestleMania 11 as a, as a tag team partner to Owen Hart and Owen Hart and Yokozuna beat the Smoking Guns to become World Wrestling Federation tag team champions and for the close to six months Owen Hart and Yokozuna were a dominant tag team they beat the Smoking Guns the Razor Ramon and Savio Vega and 
the Allied powers, Luger and the Bulldog, among others, but then the Smoking Guns regained to tie those back. And then for the next few months, Yokozuna was limited to six-man tags or tag team match because his weight was continuing to become an issue and stuff. And this became an almost basically immobile in the lane. And around this time, WWE signed Vader, and that was a big man, and he joined like Camp Cornette, and Yokozuna was part of Camp Cornette, but they really had dissension, and then in a, a six-man tag, like Yokozuna snapped and stuff, and turned face on Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, and Yokozuna had a fun run as a face, but it was very disappointing because he was basically immobile in the lane. He really had singles matches and stuff. He was really put in tag teams and stuff. Yep. And that, and he, they did an angle where um, Vader broke his leg on Monday Night Raw, and they had to put they had to carry Yokozuna on a on a forklift because he injured his leg and stuff that was to just get over Vader as the next big superhero in the WWE and this is when the Okuzuna's weight was really big over 700 pounds it was rumors he sparsely competed in the WWE after that he wrestled at SummerSlam 96 on the pre-show when the get ropes were like gimmicked when wrestling Stone Cold Steve Austin the ropes were gimmicked so he broke broke it down and then he appeared maybe in a couple more matches like against Shawn Michaels and then in a Survivor Series match in 1996 but this is when it was 800 pounds the WWE stopped using him and for the last three and a half years of his life he, he competed in the independent circuit but many state athletic commissions did not want to sanction the match because he was well over seven hundred pounds or even eight hundred pounds that he was not officially weighed but there was rumors he was eight hundred pounds the WWE sent him to programs to get his weight down to four hundred but it was impossible because he just rebelled and stuff eventually the WWE released him and stuff and WCW tried to make a play at him to get him to appear at one of the paid views in 1999 Hogan was making a pitch for him to get back his win for Yokozuna but he but that never came to be because WCW didn't want to sign somebody who was over six seven hundred pounds and then the last few years of was kind of lonely with Yokozuna wrestling and comedy matches and stuff of some of these were only two three minutes because he was basically immobile and stuff like that and in 2000 Yokozuna went on a wrestling tour in England and he actually then he passed away in his hotel room only at the age of 34 which was very sad because Yokozuna was a very very great wrestler for his size he probably was the best super heavyweight of all time but the WWE let his weight problem go out of control out of control because if he if he stayed in that shape he probably would have been the best super heavyweight of all time but it wasn't meant to be for him for his weight control and Yokozuna's famous quote was Banzai he didn't do a lot of talking and he said Yosh Yosh Yosh, Banzai. But eventually, when he, he got to speak, he was okay on the mic, but he wasn't a great talker. And that's about it on that. Be back later, Facebook friends and YouTube followers tomorrow. Three more video blogs. They'll be about the, the infamous day on November 22nd, 1963, 51 years ago. Tomorrow, JFK's assassination, the Batman television series, and the crush. Macho Man Randy Savage feel. Good night, everybody.